Hey there folks, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a very cool sausage that comes from the area of Toluca, Mexico, and it's called chorizo verde. Chorizo verde translates to green sausage, and today's sausage is literally green. It gets its color from some of the various ingredients that are used in the recipe. Let me show you how to make it. Let's take a look at the meat that we're working with. This is an all pork sausage. It's been partially frozen. I've got pork shoulder with a little extra back fat and the total fat content here is about 30%. This is gonna be a coarse ground sausage. So 10 millimeter plate into the grinder and look at how nice and pebbly that's coming out. This is because it was partially frozen. Temperature of the meat before grinding was around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that's absolutely brilliant. This is what our meat looks like once it's been ground. Very loose, very nice. I'm gonna place this back into the freezer while we get the rest of our ingredients together and check this out. Look at these ingredients. Having lots of beautiful leafy green vegetables, herbs, peppers is key to this recipe. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Poblano pepper. We've also got fresh oregano, watercress, uh, serrano peppers. You could use jalapeno if you don't want it nearly as spicy. We've got a kale leaf known as dino kale or Italian lacinacto. If you like kale, this is a great kale to grow. We're also using parsley, cilantro. I've got tomatillos and then spinach. Now, a lot of these ingredients can be substituted for something different. Just make sure that they're green. Keep the cilantro, keep the parsley, pretty much everything else you could do whatever you want with. If you want arugula, you know, if you want to do all lettuce, all spinach, that's fine. We are going to add a little garlic and of course an onion. And there are a couple other ingredients I want to talk about like these. The first is red wine vinegar. We've got red wine. We've also got coriander seed and pumpkin seed, which we're going to toast. And as a kid in Mexico, we use the fistfuls of toasted pumpkin seed with just a little bit of salt. Absolutely delicious. Now the red wine vinegar is going to denature the proteins of this sausage, giving us a loose and crumbly texture, much like traditional Mexican chorizo. So you need to be aware of that when making this recipe. All right, let me show you how we're gonna prepare all these ingredients. We're gonna start by toasting the pumpkin seeds. Nothing complex here, medium heat. Toast them till they get a little color. Once they're done, let's go ahead and toast the coriander seeds. And we're, we're looking for a nice toasty color and your kitchen should smell pretty incredible. Let's roast our peppers. I'm putting this over a direct flame. You can also put these in your oven at 400 F and once they get charred to the point where they're completely black, set them in a bowl and cover them with cling film. This is gonna allow those peppers to sweat and you'll be able to remove the skin with no problem. Set that bowl to the side for 10 or 15 minutes while we get our tomatillos roasted as well. Tomatillos on an open flame until they are beautifully charred. Once again, you could do this inside your oven, and once they're done, remove them and set them to the side to cool. Now onto the leafy green stuff. I've got a pot of water boiling, no salt in it, just water, and we're gonna stick everything else that's green inside that pot. We wanna blanch it for three minutes, so make sure your water's boiling, stick all your green stuff in it, and 180 seconds later, you are good to go. This is gonna help really retain that beautiful green color. After three minutes, let's take it out of the water, drain for a second, and set it to the side to cool because we are almost done. Are you still with me? Okay, this is what everything looks like so far. Our tomatillos have cooled down just a little bit, and you can see once they've been charred, that outer skin comes off with no problem. As far as the peppers go, this is technically an easier job when you do it under running water, but let me just show you what it looks like after they've sweat for about 15 minutes. You can just rub your finger on that pepper, and the skin comes right off. But like I said, if you do this under running water, it's a whole lot less messy and a whole lot easier. We're gonna remove the stem, we're gonna remove the seeds, and this is what everything else looks like. Now, we didn't talk a whole lot about the spices, but we've got salt, pepper, cumin, and clove. I will have a recipe link in the description box below in case you wanna make this awesome sausage. And if you're an Eagle Eye recipe detective, you'll notice that the ratios of our spices are slightly higher, and that's because we're accommodating for all of the vegetables that are unseasoned. So it should come out perfect. And just remember, this recipe is highly customizable. Use what you have. I'm using pumpkin seeds, but if you wanna use almonds, that's okay. Or if you wanna omit the nuts, you can omit the nuts, no big deal. I used a bunch of different greens. If you just wanna use one variety, that's fine. Don't stress out too much over the ingredients. Okay, let's make the salsa. Let's start with our spices and our toasted pumpkin and coriander seed that's going into the blender. Blend that on high for 20 to 30 seconds. You just wanna make sure that everything is chopped up nicely. Once that's done, we are gonna add our red wine vinegar and our red wine. We're gonna blend this on high for another 
20 to 30 seconds, it really, it's not that big a deal. You just want to make sure that everything is properly chopped up before you add the rest of your ingredients. So after about 30 seconds, this is what it looks like. It's a very aromatic paste. It's time to add all of our green stuff. So let's get the spinach, the peppers, the tomatillos, our herbs. Let's go ahead and throw in the onions and garlic. And we're going to blend this on high again for this time, maybe 15 to 20 seconds. I want it to be a little chunky, so I don't want it to be ultra smooth. And there it is. That is what our green salsa, which happens to smell amazing, uh, is going to look like. And we want to definitely give it a little taste just to see if we need to make any, you know, modifications. So going in for a bite. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be nice. Here we go. All right. We've got our salsa. We've got our coarsely ground pork, and it's now time to mix everything together. So all of that salsa is getting mixed with that pork, and we're just going to mix it till it's well incorporated. Because there is so much of that liquid, salsa, paste, whatever you want to call it, going in with the pork, you're not going to have the same type of texture that you would a traditional sausage. So we're just going to mix this till it's well incorporated. It might feel a little sticky, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Because remember, after all, this is a loose textured sausage. That vinegar in the sausage recipe is going to help cure the meat. It's going to lower the pH, which should give the sausage a nice brightness, but it should also help extend the shelf life. So once it's wrapped, Let's put it into the refrigerator for a day or two, and here's what it's going to look like after a couple days. This has had an opportunity for the spices to come together. It smells wonderful. Wow. A lot of things going on with this sausage meat, and we're going to go ahead and place it into a casing. The casing is completely optional for this sausage. This actually cooks up, in my opinion, much better outside of a casing, but I did want to see what it would look like as a green sausage in a casing, and I got to admit that kind of looks pretty cool. So casing or no casing, completely up to you. Here in a second, you'll see how we cook it up and you can decide for yourself. I am going to tie that off with a little string, just creating some little segments. All right, folks, our Mexican chorizo verde is done. Check out that color. Absolutely amazing. It smells incredible. So I think what we're going to do right quick, fry some up, put it in a tortilla and just see how it tastes. Now, just remember the texture of this sausage is going to be just like your classic Mexican chorizo. So it's not going to be well bound together. It's going to be more loose and crumbly, and it should be pretty incredible. Let's go fry some up. I'm going to eat this with a homemade flour tortilla. You could eat this any way you want. Put it on a tostada, a taco. You can serve it up with eggs. It really doesn't matter, but I personally love fresh flour tortillas. And if you'd like to learn how to cook like a Mexican, let me know in the comment section below. We'll get something going for you. So once that tortilla has puffed up, we're now going to go ahead and fry our chorizo verde. And all I did was I took it out of the casing. In my opinion, this cooks much better outside of the casing, although you can cook it in the casing. But remember, this is a relatively loose textured, crumbly sausage. You'll see that here in a second. All right, guys, let's see what this tastes like. Chorizo verde on the tortilla. And you can literally put whatever you want right here. I'm just going to add some fresh onions tomatoes, and a little salsa valentina. This is a great hot sauce, and this smells incredible. Ooh, wow. Okay. Our chorizo verde inside of a homemade flour tortilla. This looks absolutely mouth-watering. Let's just see how we did. This is my kind of eating right here. I can have a big old plate of this. Matter of fact, I probably will, but I don't feel like I'm getting you know, the full flavor of the chorizo verde. Let me slice a piece off of the sausage so that we can, you can kind of see here. We've got a beautiful green color. Let's just go ahead and see how this tastes. Huh, there it is. Wow, that is incredible. And where do you even start with a sausage like this? I mean, there is so much going on as far as flavors go. It's definitely herb forward. The parsley and the cilantro are coming in nice. The serranos bring low level heat and toasted pumpkin seed, sort of nutty, smoky element. Overall, this sausage is incredibly bright. It's fresh and flavorful and one I can certainly see making again. But with that being said, I do realize that not everybody likes the texture of classic Mexican chorizo. So if you don't like that sort of loose and crumbly texture, you can modify the recipe by omitting the vinegar, reducing the amount of green salsa that we add to the recipe, and perhaps even adding a binder. And you'll probably end up with a texture that you're looking for with a sausage that tastes pretty close. It's not going to be quite the same, but it's going to still be pretty delicious. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. And if you like this video or got anything out of it, a thumbs up is always helpful. Thanks for being here. 
We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.